Hey, what's up, guys? Tugi here, back again with another episode of my Montreal Canadiens franchise mode series right here on NHL 18. And today, it's our first round matchup against the Toronto Maple Leafs. We are back to 100% as far as the healthy lineup is concerned. Kale McCarr is ready to go for this postseason series. We're not going to waste any time. We're going to take a look at the Toronto lineup and get this series underway. So let's do just that. Let's see what we're up against in the form of Toronto at this point. So the top line is what you would hope. I imagine at least what Leafs fans would hope they'd still have at this point in real life. Mitch Marner. Austin Matthews and William Nylander. I don't need to sit here and hype up how dangerous of a line that can be. Second line is Tyler Ennis, who's only a depth forward. You look at the attributes, though. He's still capable. Uh, with Charlie Coyle, no less. So the Minnesota teammates there reunited. And Kyle Okpozo rounds out that second line. It's interesting. I don't want to criticize it too much because you know how this game works. Dimitro Timoshov is on the third line with Nazem Kadri and Zach Hyman. So again, Kadri and Hyman still kicking around. And the fourth line is Riley Barber, Nick Cousins, and Zach Cassian. So I guess they traded Matt Martin for Zach Cassian. Might not be the smartest move, but it is what it is. Obviously, I'm afraid of that top line. We'll see how the rest of the team can contribute. And even in saying that, I feel like I jinxed myself, which I probably did. Oh. Okay, then. <laughs> the defense is something else. The top line. Morgan Riley and Timothy Liljegren, 92 overall. Yikes. Second pairing. I think I said top line. First pairing was that. Second pairing is Darnell Nurse, a familiar face to say the least, with John Carlson. Third pairing is Jared McIsaac with Nikita Zaitsev. Damn. The goaltender is still Frederick Anderson at this point, 34 years old. The backup, a familiar face from a rebuilding hockey town. It is Ian Scott. No injuries, three healthy scratches. Defenseman Aaron Latowski center Alan McShane, and Henrik Henula. I'm surprised neither of those defensemen are in the lineup for Toronto. People talk about me mismanaging prospects. It's kind of ridiculous to have those players scratched, but in a way, I'm kind of glad, I'm kind of glad that they are. Of course, we finished in second place in the division this year as Emmy tries to paw her own jaw off. That's, that's always good. Got distracted. We managed to secure... Home ice advantage was my point. Let's see if we can take advantage of it, shall we? Game one on home ice in Montreal. Let's go. Let's do this. We'll also keep an eye out on the Laval Rocket. Of course, I'm mainly interested in our goaltender, Phil Shea. That's about it. But the more playoff experience he can get, the better. First period. Went relatively well. It's Franzen with the opening goal. We outshot them 10-8, to and we have the lead. Pretty damn good start. Second period, we're continuing to keep them off the scoreboard. 20 shots to 19, but we have the one nothing lead. I have a feeling that we're going to need an insurance goal. Can we get it on this 5-on-3 power play? No, we cannot. The Leafs get one of their own. Okay. No one was able to score. Garlock, though, gets one not too long after, though, Austin Matthews. All right, six minutes to go. It's going to be a photo finish. Can we hold on? Can we secure the win? Murray Hino makes it three, and that is enough. So Austin Matthews gives us a little bit of a scare, but thankfully we were able to hold on. The goal in the first period by our defenseman Franzen. Garlock and Hynote are able to contribute in the third. Garlock, the game winner. Hynote with the insurance. And that takes care of that. Game one in the books. 29 saves for Spike Richmond. 2.9 for Jared Franz and a two assist night for Kirk Cunning. Although I do wonder the penalties. 
Let's take a look here. Interference on Zaitsev, holding on Kadri. And then it was a tripping minor on Lucic and a hooking minor on Philip Deneau. So we lost, if I'm not mistaken, I know Deneau is still on the penalty kill. I imagine Lucic is as well. We lost two of our better penalty killers as Kale McCarr is complaining about ice time. Let's see if we can go out and solve that issue right now. We lost two of our bigger, you know, penalty kill guys. Yet we somehow survived. I'm not sure how we managed to do that. You know, we'll double check here to see if anyone else is going to complain about ice time. And aside from Philip Deneau, I don't think anybody will. Yeah, we have to keep Kale McCarr relatively happy. I would rather... I think I'd rather keep Juleson, you know, in a better frame of mind than Makar. I'm not really sure why Makar is complaining. Who could we take? Uh, I guess we could take Patrick Lucic out. That might not be the best move, though. Maybe Franzen? Maybe take Jared Franzen out? Not for Quentin Hughes, for Kale Makar. And we'll see if that works. I don't know how much faith I have in that, but... It's worth a shot, right? Just to try and keep him happy. I'm not sure what that situation is going to be long term. I doubt we'll be able to keep someone like Kale McCarr happy for long. Of course, I'd prefer to have Noah Juleson play in a higher role, especially considering Franzen will overtake him on the top pairing as soon as next season. But for now, we'll try to keep Kale McCarr happy. And it's time for Game 2. Game 2. Still on home ice. Let's see if we can make the most of this. Not to mention, we're like seven minutes into this video. There have been occasions where I haven't even started simming the first game yet. So we're way ahead of schedule. First period of game two. And that is a great start. Akison and cutting the top line. Strikes twice despite being outshot 15 to 10. We have the 2-0 lead. Second period, can we hold on to it? Uh, we can. We can, in fact. I didn't expect this to, as I'm sure you could tell. I didn't expect that to happen. Despite being outshot 28-16, to 16, we still had the 2-0 lead. I don't want to jinx anybody. In particular, Noah Juleson makes it 3-0 three. Three on the board. And there it is. Kyle Okposo ruins the Spike Richmond shutout bid. But what a performance so far from Richmond. We'll hope he can get the win here in Game 2. We weren't able to capitalize on that power play, but I don't think it's going to matter. For the second consecutive game, 3-1 is your final score, despite the fact we were outshot 42-24. We walk away with the victory. 41 saves from Spike Richmond, a three-point night from Cole Ackeson, two-point night again for Kirk Cunning. And the Habs, believe it or not, have a 2-0 series lead on Toronto. Not to mention the Laval Rocket have a 2-0 series lead on the Utica Comets and could end that series right now. We won't keep an eye on it. We're going to focus on Game 3 as the series shifts to Toronto. I can't help but say it that way. It's because of the Rock. I'm sorry. It's just the way he used to say it to try and aggravate people, and it's just ingrained in my memory. Not that I'm trying to aggravate Leafs fans, because let's be honest. Here comes the confidence, here comes that cockiness, here comes that sarcasm, because I know I'm setting myself up for failure here. We got this series in the bag, don't we? It's over already, it's already over. We shouldn't even have had to have flown to Toronto. What's the point? It's over, done with. We got this signed, sealed, and delivered. Just watch. First period of game three is scoreless. We got them right where we want them. Second period. Okay, well, you know, I, I can't say I expected anything different. Charlie Coyle and Kyle Okpozo with the two goals. We were outshot 22-18, and that sets up this crucial third period. Early power play chance for Toronto is killed off. If we're able to come back here, we have a power play chance that we can't do anything with. It would be a major game changer for us to be able to get that 3-0 series lead. Unfortunately, it's not looking too good, although Philip Deneau gets a power play goal. Why were you out there on the power play? Doesn't matter. Jared McIsaac makes it 3-1. to one. And through three games, the only scoreline we have seen is 3-1. The 3-1 victories in games 1 and 2 for us at home. In game 3, the home team wins yet again. 28 saves from Freddie Anderson. And Toronto's on the board. 
Did the Laval Rocket manage to complete the sweep? They did not. So both teams lost. To hell with April 14th, 2024. Damn it. Let's go game four. Let's not. Let's not drag this out, right? The team's obviously going to stay the same. We pretty much have no choice in keeping it that way. It's just a matter of winning as I try to fight off this yawn. Easier said than done. First period of game four. Not the ideal start yet again. William Nylander. We were shot 11 to 5. Not good. Second period. Also not good. Kyle Ocposo makes it two. We were <laughs> being outshot 26 to 12. All right. I'd say the home team is destined to not win. Nazem Kadri makes it three. 28 seconds into the period. I said I was jinxing myself. Just to kind of test EA. Right? Just to test the system and be like, hey, I know I'm going to jinx myself here. So totally don't jinx me. Nope. Nope. The second you start talking as if you have a ton of confidence, even if you're being sarcastic, the game will strike you down. 4 nothing final. Outshot 41-22. to The home team has yet to lose, and this series is all tied up after the first four games. The Laval Rocket have also lost two in a row. They're going to a decisive game five against the Utica Comets. Again, we only care about our goaltending prospect, but I'd still like for them to continue. We'll see if that's the case, but our focus is on this game against the Leafs. Game five back on home ice. Again, the home team is yet to lose. Let's hope that trend continues. First period. Not ideal. Kyle Ocposo is on fire, and that's a scary thing. We outshot them 11-9, but we're down one nothing on the board. Second period. That's much better. Lucic. Scores on Ian Scott, not on Anderson. You have to wonder if it's a one-game injury or if he's out long-term. That could be the deciding moment of this series. Third period, as I continue to fight off yawning, and Dimitro Timoshov scores under two minutes into the third. We're down. Charlie Coyle, former Hab. Makes it 3-1. Thankfully, Josh Norris gets a goal back to give us a fighting chance. We have a power play opportunity that we cannot do anything with. Three minutes to go. Can we tie it up to force overtime? No, we cannot. The Leafs take game five. By the score of 4-2, to two, despite being outshot. And despite having Ian Scott between the pipes. Three straight wins for the ha uh, for the Leafs. I should say, I wish I could say for the Habs. I'm so used to saying for the Habs as an opponent, of course. Thankfully, Laval managed to move on. So that's good. We have the Laval Rocket and the Syracuse Crunch in the second round. The question is, will we see the Montreal Canadiens in the second round? Three straight losses. Yikes. Not good. Let's take a look at the lineup. See if there's anything we can do. Maybe maybe we should have done this before the previous game, to be honest. Second line's... Oof, that second line's struggling. That third line's struggling, too. All right, we got to mix it up. We got to mix it up. What do we want to do here? How do we want to figure this out? I cannot stop. I, I can't fight off this yawn. It's just... it's The, the yawn it wants to happen. I don't want to yawn, but... Apparently, I don't have much choice in the matter. Let's go. I know Norris is a tremendous center. But I'm not sure what else to do. Aside from maybe going with Norris, Sizek, and Simmons. And then have High Note with Garlock on his left, Conklin on his right. Because I'm not really sure what else we can do. What else could we... Yeah, that's, that looks like our best combination here. It does, unless we drop Sizek, but it would have to be more than likely for Conklin. Oh, damn, I'm just going to embrace the on. I'm just going to embrace it. There we go. It's out of the way. It happened. Let's move on. Let's go with Conklin on the uh, second line with Norris and Sizek. Let's go with that. And we'll hope for the best. Defensively. Top pairing needs to be switched. Second, yeah, okay, so our defensive pairings are a bit of a disaster anyway. Let's go with... 
That looks good. Lucic, Makar, Hughes, Franzen, Jenks, and Juleson. Works for me. Let's see if we can keep this season alive. If we don't, well, I can't really say I expected to make the playoffs all that much. It was nice to make the playoffs to begin with. I would have, obvi I, I would obviously like to find some success. Wasn't exactly holding my breath though on that happening. Game six. Let's do this. Can we keep the season alive? Let's find out. First period in Toronto. That's a good start. Josh Norris with the new line combinations. He does score on Freddie Anderson, so he is back in goal. Which is a little bit disappointing, although it's not like we could beat Ian Scott anyway. So what does it matter? What difference does it make? Second period. And Riley Barber ties it up. 19 shots apiece. Tied on the scoreboard. The season comes down to this. Third period of Game 6. Win or we are out. And we can't capitalize on that early power play chance. The Leafs get one of their own. That's also killed off. Next goal could very well win this game at this point. Three minutes remaining. And overtime awaits. To keep our season alive, we need to win in overtime here in Game 6. Let's see if we can do it. Let's see if we can do it. Will it end quickly? Power play chance for the Habs is killed off. That might have been our best chance. Come on now. With some of the talent we have, we can't go down like this. Put up a fight, damn it. Spike Richmond standing on his head. We need him to continue to do so. Is it double overtime? Yes, it is double overtime in game six. Yikes. <laughs> That's the only way to put it. I'm still trying to fight off this yawn. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, boy. All right. Here we go. Double overtime in game six. Can we keep the season alive? Please, come on now. Yes. Friggin' Garlock gets it. Whoo! I couldn't tell at first, to be honest. I should have been able to, but I could not tell. It's because of the blue outline that I wasn't entirely sure. Preston Garlock, of all people, gets the overtime winner. 2-1 final gets the double overtime winner. Frederick Anderson... With a first star of the game performance, not to take anything away from Spike Richmond, of course. Preston Garlock was your third star with the GWG, and that secures the right for us to fight for our playoff lives. I don't know where I'm going with this. Game 7, that's what it means. Game 7, back on home ice. Of course this series went 7, though. Of course it did. Keeping an eye out on the Laval Rocket. They are up 1-0 in their series against the Syracuse Crunch. I don't know what else we could really change about this lineup. We just got the win in the prior game. It comes down to this. Why waste time? We know what this means. Game 7 on home ice. We didn't really expect to make the playoffs this year. We did. We finished second in the division I'd like for this team, this new core, to be able to gel together and be able to overcome a little bit of adversity and not blow it in the first round like the previous core did on numerous occasions. First period of Game 7, and that's a strong start. Lucic with the opening goal. Eight shots to seven in our favor. But the oh-so-important goal is on the board. Second period is scoreless. They're now shooting us 18 to 14, but Lucic's strike is still the difference maker. We are 20 minutes away from either going to the second round, going to the golf course, or potentially going to overtime. Let's hope for the win. Let's go. Third period, game seven here in the first round. Can we, in what I would say is an upset, can we pull off that upset against Toronto? Power play chance here. We're not able to capitalize. Six minutes to go. Can we hold on 
Spike Richmond is scored on by William Nylander. It was too good to be true. It was too good to be true. William Nylander with 1.49 to go in the game. In regulation. Scores from the slot. And we are going to overtime for the second consecutive game. It was a 2-1 victory for us thanks to Preston Garlock. And now, with the series on the line, it's time to find out who will be the hero. Let's go. Overtime of Game 7. We're four minutes in. Power play chance for the Habs. Dress! Kale McCarr! Gets the winner. The blue confused me again. But thankfully the result is exactly what we wanted. Kale McCarr with the overtime winner in game seven. And the Habs are moving on to the second round. Ridiculous. Spike Richmond with a 29 save performance. Frederick Anderson had a great series. Kale McCarr gets the game winner, gets the series clinching goal in overtime. And we are going to the second round. One season after blowing this team up, starting to build a new core, the midseason acquisition of Cole Ackeson. And here we are. Spike Richmond with an unreal 938 save percentage. Of course, we didn't have to rely on Mike Condon whatsoever. Defensively, Patrick Lucic, pretty solid series. Four points was a minus one, however. Kale McCarr didn't do a damn thing until he did. <laughs> until he did. He waited for his moment, and what a moment it was. The overtime series clinching goal. Ridiculous. Quentin Hughes, oh man, I can't bite off the yawn, I'm so sorry. Quentin Hughes with two points, three points for Jared Franzen. Norm Jenks didn't do a whole hell of a lot. Juleson has the one goal, so we have a couple of options that we could go with for our defense. Some underperforming players with a defense that you know generally put up quite a few points this past season. And definitely some options to work with when it comes to every line of forwards. We have some massively underperforming players. To be honest, it is it is quite shocking that we were able to make it past Toronto with that many underperforming players. And the reason we did, well, you could you could give credit to Spike uh, Richmond. I almost said Spike Rowe again. Again, that's going to be an issue throughout the entire course of this series. We were able to get the job done. We were able to withstand a deadly top line. And we were able to outduel Freddie Anderson. Let's find out. Let us find out, even though we basically already know who we're playing in the second round. Drum roll, please. And it is... Buffalo. 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 <laughs> because of course it is. It's not like we haven't struggled against the Sabres throughout the course of the series, especially in the playoffs. They were able to pull off the upset. They eliminated Detroit in the first round. Not only that, they swept them. And now we once again square off against the Sabres, Penguins and Flyers. The other matchup, Pittsburgh beats Washington in the first round to the surprise of absolutely nobody. So guys, as we prepare for the next episode, I am going to end it here. I know a lot of you guys have been you know, wanting me to simulate the entire playoffs. I would. Swear to God I would. You can tell though, I'm having trouble fighting off yawning. I still have to record a Hartford episode. So let's just leave it at this one series. Maybe the next episode will go as far as this team decides to go. Maybe. I'm not sure. But I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, you know what you can do to support the video 
and the channel. Let me know down in the comments below as well what you would do with our lineup. Because again, we have quite a few options when it comes to where we put certain people. Do we go with just the, you know, the best players and the best lines? Do we go with the highest performing players and put them in a better spot? What do you think? What strategy would you go with? What defensive pairings would you run with? Of course, the only thing that's not going to change is the fact that Spike Richmond was absolutely the right player to pick up for this franchise moving forward links are in the description to my twitter and twitch give me a follow on there if you have not already done so and i will see you guys in the next episode of this wonderful series of mine where we are hopefully going to continue our playoff push well, we're in the playoffs. It's not necessarily a playoff push. It's more of a it's more of a run to the cup. I just don't want to say the word or the words Stanley Cup because let's be honest, this team is cursed. But curses are meant to be broken. I am rambling and yawning. I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you for watching yet again. Goodbye.